time for another fun little PC build. This one, my goal was to use a bunch of secondhand parts I had laying around and make a half decent system for playing, you know, some older games, you know, but newer than what my uh, Athlon XP system down here could run. Uh, actually, I have two Athlon XP systems over there. They're both uh, the 2600 plus processor. Both still great running systems, but um, I wanted to take advantage of some crap I had laying around. But anyway, found this in a computer that was in the trash. It's a Pentium Dual Core E2160, which I hear is quite overclockable. Uh, people have been hitting around 3 gigahertz on this chip with the stock voltage and cooler, uh, supposedly. Uh, the normal clock on it is 1.8 gigahertz, so that's a pretty big increase. Uh, had two gigs of G-Skill RAM uh, left over from a system build. Um, also, this is the stock cooler from that Pentium Dual Core. This is the nice Socket 775 style cooler with the real mounting system with the back plate and everything. Only thing I bought new was this Gigabyte Micro ATX board. It's a uh, G41M ES2L. It's got onboard video, but I'm going to try and dig up a... Uh, uh, old GeForce 6600 GT and, and uh, use that in here, but going to be using the speed up second hand case and one of those 550 watt Acbell power supplies. See if I can put this thing together. RAM and CPU are installed now, and uh, I guess it's time to put it in the case and see if it'll post. All right, I've got everything uh, installed and connected. I'm going to make sure that the CPU is good before I bother tying up all the cables. Because uh, the CPU did come out of a trashed computer. So, let's press power and see what happens. Holy crap. Hear that Death Star spinning up. Holy crap. It works. Oops, I didn't hit pause soon enough. Holy crap. See if I can uh, pause this BIOS screen here. Yeah. Or better yet, go into the BIOS. Oh, I'm going to have some fun with this. Shall we see how fast this CPU can go? I think so. Another thing, on a lot of gigabyte motherboards, there's uh, advanced options in the BIOS that are often hidden. Whether it's like that on this board or not, I'm not sure. But what you do is press Control F1, and you'll see it flash a little bit there. And a lot of times it'll, there'll be more options in the menus that weren't there before. Um, I know the last few systems I built, uh, uh, at least the AMD based ones, had that, that feature. But... Uh, yeah, let's see here. Yeah, right now I'm just running on the onboard video. I'll get the video card out later. And, uh, let's see. Fans, chipset. Let's see how hot the CPU is. Darn it, get over there. Uh, 20 degrees Celsius. Wow, that's cold. Anyway, it's hard to play with the BIOS and hold the camera at the same time, so I think I'm going to see what, what I can tweak up here and uh, finish putting this together. Also, this hard drive is just temporary because it does have a lot of bad sectors on it. It's just kind of my test hard drive. If the system turns out really good, I'll, uh, I'll grab a better drive from somewhere. But so far, so good. At least I know the CPU will post. Let's see if it'll boot with these settings. I've got the bus speed up to 266. It was originally 200, which will give me 2.4 gigahertz instead of 1.8. Uh, in order to, so I'm not sure how overclockable this RAM is. I'm going to have to look at it later, but I'm going to set this ratio down so that the RAM is running at 889, which isn't isn't too bad compared to 1066 that it would be at if I didn't change that ratio. But uh, find out if it's going to boot without any further tweaking on the voltage or anything. Just out of curiosity. Probably going to crash. Heh, <laughs> it just shut itself right down. Oh, 
and just turn back on. That was weird. Darn it, I didn't see the BIOS quick enough. Let's see. It's really hard to uh, doggone this thing. It's trying to boot Windows now. I don't even have a mouse hooked up. Let me grab a mouse. I can't believe this thing, man. This this hard drive had a test install of Windows 7 on it that came off of my Ath Athlon XP machine, and uh, it just booted right up in this Intel board with completely different hardware, and uh, it's busy doing a driver install. I mean, this thing booted up so fast it was ridiculous. I'm trying to uh, wait for the mouse to come up here so I can see what speed it's running at. It hasn't locked up yet. So either it's reset the speed back a default, or it's running stable overclocked. It's just uh, got to wait a little bit here. There's a ton of drivers. Okay, I got my mouse. All right, computer properties. Holy crap! It's running at 2.4 gigahertz. It was that easy. I don't have the floppy drive hooked up. Holy crap. Yeah, and so far this thing seems extremely snappy. So let me do a reboot and then, uh, see how it works. Let's watch the full boot process here, see how long it takes. That was too easy. Wonder if I can overclock the RAM to 1066 without it crashing. I don't know if I want to push it. The CPU is only worth about 20 bucks. The RAM is worth a lot more than that. Here we go. Not bad for such an old system, eh? Only two gigs of RAM too, which is the minimum requirement for a uh, 64-bit version of uh, Windows 7. Actually, that's probably why it's running so fast. This is a 32-bit Windows 7, I'm pretty sure. Um, unless I had it installed on the Pentium 4, I really don't remember if this was on the Athlon XP or the Pentium 4. So this could be the 64-bit. Uh, Let's check. Oh, it is. I'll be damned. So, it's running on the minimum recommended RAM. And it's snapping right along. Overclocked to 2.4 gigahertz. I don't know if I'm going to push it much, much higher than that. Because if it's stable, I might as well just leave it alone. But, uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and tie up these wires now. Maybe run some benchmarks. See if I can double check and make sure this thing is stable at this speed. It's one bad thing about cheap flimsy cases, man. The CD-ROMs get so noisy. It's actually an IDE uh, DVD drive that came out of one of my servers when I upgraded it to SATA. And uh, I really can't stand IDE in a desktop computer. And the only thing I even use it anymore is my file server because it's cheap. But for a desktop, I'm thinking about getting out my IDE to SATA adapter and using that just to get rid of that stupid ribbon cable. Sounds like a doggone fire siren. CPU is still ice cold, or the, the heatsink is still really cold to the touch. Even overclocked to 2.4 gig. It's just crazy. case is pretty neat looking too. Not bad really. Just got a couple dents in it. 
think I'm going to have some fun with this system. As good as Windows 7 is running on this so far, unfortunately I don't have uh, another disk, so I'm just going to have to go ahead and install one of my old Windows XP's on here. I think I have an extra Windows XP Media Center Edition laying around that's not installed in any other machine that I can use for this for the time being. And uh, once I get a few more bucks, I'm certainly going to buy another 64-bit uh, Windows 7 to put on here. I think it's going to be totally worth it. Too bad the RAM, uh, both RAM slots are being used. Originally, I was going to get a, a regular ATX motherboard, but I just I couldn't find one that uh, fit my needs. That you know was a full ATX, and because uh, everything's like DDR3 now. And I wanted to use all this existing hardware, but the way I see it, I'm not going to be installing a bunch of PCI cards because the onboard sound is better than any of the cards I have laying around. All I need is the uh, video card slot, really. The worst limitation of this micro ATX board is the two RAM slots, so if I want to add more RAM, I gotta completely take these out and get some bigger ones, and that's gonna cost money. But it's just going to be for casual use down here in my basement when I'm playing games with friends of mine. So I think it'll work out. Well, I've been testing the system for the last couple of days and it's been running great. Uh, no stability problems whatsoever. I did end up changing the hard drive to a Western Digital that I forgot that I had and I put that in there. So it's 160 gig. It's in a lot better condition than that uh, Hitachi was. And... Uh, I've got Windows XP Media Center Edition installed. I'm really tired of XP, but like I said, I couldn't really afford to uh, pick up another copy of Windows 7 yet. Uh, still got it running at 2.4 gigahertz. I don't really care to push it any faster yet. Uh, if I do, I'm either going to get some better, some faster RAM, or uh, wait till I can get Windows 7 and maybe play with it some more. But uh, for what I'm doing right now, it's just fine. But anyway. Well, this is Passmark performance test. I'm going to run the benchmark and see what this thing gets. And uh, of course, I'm not going to record the whole thing, but I'll do the. I'll uh, show the final result. And, uh, just got to get some cabling tied up in this, make it a little neater, and put some slot covers in the back, and I'm all done. At least until the uh, other video card comes back. Disc test. Oh, disc test is always going to take the longest because we all know the hard drive is the slowest part of a computer. Unless, of course, you're one of those Uber Elite guys that's got a solid state drive installed. A really high end solid state drive at that. A lot of the uh, cheaper ones aren't even that fast. Wow. Not too bad for an old, old hard drive. Definitely not the best, but not too bad. Hmm. Yeah, I want to do a CD test. Uh, CPU mark 1404 not bad I think the uh, normal CPU mark on their website for this CPU was like 1029 or something when it was running at its stock speed so that's like a 40% increase right there it's pretty cool